Welcome to Aomori City. What you have in front of us, look at this. This is some really delicious Japanese kuroge wagyu. Some of the best wagyu in Japan because it's got that beautiful marbling. Look at that. It's got a little bit of seasoning on there too. And here we have on the other side um, a different brand of wagyu. And we're gonna be trying two from Aomori Prefecture. This is uh, the prefecture on the very north of Japan's main island. And we have three Japanese sake we're gonna try with this. I'm just actually gonna have this one called Denshu, which is one of my favorites um, with, with this. And then kind of describe to you the taste. I also have some of the local uh, garlic. Believe it or not, they, they farm garlic here in Aomori. And of course, that goes really well with yakiniku. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. I have not had lunch, I'm starving. How you doing everybody? So in this live stream, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the, the Wagyu brands of Aomori Prefecture and then um, have, have this on the grill. Now, there's lots of different ways to try Wagyu. There's sukiyaki, there's teponyaki, grilling it on top of a table, there's yakiniku style. Um, you could just eat it raw apparently and sushi too, which I've done before in the past. So yakiniku is one of the more popular ones it's also controversial because we had an argument when I was in Yonezawa recently. If you grill it, you lose some of the fat into the grill. Is that not a waste? Well, we're going to try that today. First off, I want to introduce you to um, this beef. This is the uh, Oma. Uh, this, is, this is the Koraishi. Okay, this is the Koraishi. <laughs> That's, I've got the, this is the Koraishi Gyu. That's the name of a brand of Wagyu from south part of Aomori, just near Towada. Let me show you in the map where it is because I, I think it's it's pretty significant to know exactly where you're eating the beef from. Tawada City is is kind of a um, kind of a larger town in in Aomori Prefecture. Again, Aomori Prefecture right here is on the very north. That's where I am, that blue spot. And just there's Lake Tawada, and just to the side here is Tawada Town, and this is just south of here is where the the, this beef brand is from. Also, this garlic is from a place called Taco, which is just near there too. So it all comes from almost the same region. The other Wagyu we're gonna be eating today is from the very north. And I'm gonna explain that to you because it has a pretty interesting story, I think. I wanna say thank you too, because uh, uh, Shimachi Yakiniku O, this is where I'm eating um, this beef here. It's, not, it's about two, three minute walk from Aomori Station, which is pretty convenient. All right, let's get into it. Enough talking. I, I'm really um, hungry. So check out this grill here as we barbecue pieces of the delicious, look at the marbling on that. Oh, you can hear the, the hiss of the grill. You don't want to you don't want to over grill the wagyu because I, I like to say just activate the fats There's different sauces that you can try with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna try this here. <laughs> Alright, just watch, look at this here. So this is wasabi that I'm putting on here. Check this out, okay. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be electrifying. There's a little piece of wasabi on this uh, uh, wagyu here. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Ah, itadakimasu. 
<laughs> I'm so hungry. Oh, that's good. Wow, this brand of Wagyu just... It, it's hard to differentiate the different brands of Wagyu. I mean, is there any difference between it being from a certain area? I like to think that if you're eating in a certain uh, regional place in Japan, if you're in a local area, you want to eat the local food. And sometimes it's hard to eat it. They'll say just kokunai. So I'm really happy that uh, Shimachi Yakuniku Ohi, this restaurant, has um, uh, Aomori-based beef, local beef, which I think is important for me to, uh, uh, to eat for all of us when we come to a regional area. I, I, it, it's hard for me to, to finger exactly what is different between this and other Wagyu uh, beef, so I've got to eat more pieces of it, obviously. I'm gonna add some of this spicy tare as well into the dish. Gosh, this smells so good. There's three different kinds of sauces. I'll show you that in a second. The grilling is incredible. The smell that I'm getting right now, it's hard for me to describe. Grilling beef. This <laughs> that's it's more than grilling beef. It's yakini. Oh, that is so pretty. All right, I'm gonna do another one and show you that I grill on top of here. So you can just put it in here when you're doing yakiniku. You can just put it right here into the sauces. That's what I normally do. In fact, if I'm not the one grilling and I'm talking with my friends, you know what happens? I'll be just talking with my friends and then people, there'll be a grill master, one of the friends around the grill. And he just takes the pieces and puts it in people's different sauces and stuff. And while you're talking, you just pick it up and eat. Not everybody is minding the grill. So that's how it sort of works. Let's try the tare. Mmm. Kuraishi Gyu is, uh, it's very good. You know, with Wagyu, it kind of just goes into your mouth. You also, you saw the fat, there's a lot of marbling in it, but when you chew it, it hits your tongue and then it just sort of melts on there. And the really good Wagyu, it does that. But more than that, there is some, the, the pink part of it, that's called akami. It's it's the, the meaty part of it. It's not just the fat, but the, that meat also is so tender because of course it is surrounded by the fats. But each bite is, is really delicious and you can't, you know, I, I always have a problem eating a lot of Wagyu because you can get full on it pretty quickly because of all the oil. It's a different kind of an oil though compared to the Angus beef, the uh, uh, very uh, red beef that we might get in the United States. Uh, Wagyu is, is a very special dish. All right, that was really good. We're gonna try some of this sake here. This is Denshu, a local Aomori sake. It is, wow, in this traditional cup here. Check it out. Oh, I like this. Sake and Wagyu. It's the way to go. I like the cup too. It's got a nice design to it. A little frosting on there. Um, Aomori Prefecture has the most snow in, in the world. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't say prefecture. Aomori City does. Aomori City has more snow than any other city in the entire world. And now I'm talking about Cleveland, too, because I used to live near Cleveland. We would get a lot of snow up there, but not, not anywhere close to what they get in Aomori. Come by, everybody. This is a Tokubetsu... In my shoe. Oh, that's a clean taste. Really clean. There's a little bit of an alcohol bite to it, and then it just sort of melts away, and then the has a lasting. Hmm. There's a little bit of an aftertaste that just dissipates. I, I I'm not getting any tones of anything because I just had some garlic <laughs> in the sauce. That's a very delicate taste. 
a very delicate taste. All right, let's get back to some grilling here. Enjoy for the next minute or two. Complete and total grilling. Play the music in your head. Three, two, one. Oh, Wagyu. Let there be two pieces this time. Whoa. Gosh, I am so much in heaven. Yakiniku cooks pretty quickly. Again, look at the marbling, A5 grade marbling. You can tell because it just got so much fat in there. And some people like it and some people don't. For me, I love it. And Aomori is so cold. Again, with all the snow, the culture of yakiniku here, a lot of people like to go out to eat and, and gather around these, uh, these hot stoves. Let there be more wagyu. Just, just a little bit more. Activate the fats. describe that this smells anymore. Oh wow, all right. All right, I'm gonna put this in spicy sauce and I'm putting one in the other sauce now too. So they're both in both two different sauces. Let's try this. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, I can't, I can't wait anymore. disturb the meat. All right, this is a spicy, a spicy tare. Mm. I'm noticing that this brand of Wagyu, the Akami, the red part of it, has a little bit more of a, a little bit more um, push to it. A little bit more tension than some of the other brands. Each brand you can kind of taste it a little bit of a difference, but honestly, a lot of the beef it does just very gentle differences between one and the other. Mm. Oh, this sauce is really good. I, hold on a second, I can pan down. You can see the three different sauces that that you can dip the the yakiniku in, but. Sometimes the best sauce, Nathan writes in, I can smell it. <laughs> I bet you I'm like pushing the steam into the, the microphone here. Uh, sometimes the sauces are good, but sometimes just a little bit of salt is all you really need to bring out um, some of the fats and the akami, that, that, that beef. A little bit of salt brings out that flavor just enough where you can taste that more natural flavor of the wagyu. But the sauces add a little bit more to it. So uh, yakiniku, the pieces are, are, are what, is, what is this about? Nanka, he call it go gramograi, like five or 10 grams or something like that. It's not, it's not really that heavy. It's not a lot of beef that you eat for each one of these uh, cuts for yakiniku, but that's perfect. What I love about the, the cuts of yakiniku is that um, like they're bite-sized, they're already cut up. So the great thing about it is one, they cook really, really fast because you can eat it fast. And two, you don't, you, you, it, it's cut so you can just try different kinds of sauces and different kind of uh, places like uh, uh, different kinds of flavors. Like this is wasabi. Then we have three different kinds of sa sauces. And then you have just plain old salt over there on the counter. And then you can just eat it raw the way, not, not, not raw like without cooking it, but you can just eat it grilled as it is and you can get a different flavor and a different experience for each one that you try now i want to show you before we get into um the next one which is the oma no kuroge wagyu oma machi no kuroge wagyu oma oma san now oma san oma machi is up in the north that's where magaro is quite famous okay let me try this uh, uh garlic i'm getting ahead of myself because i'm so excited here Oh. 
I've noticed that the garlic from Aomori is, doesn't have such a bite to it. It's a more balanced garlic flavor, meaning it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that strength that you get from Chinese garlic or from um, um, maybe other garlics that I've tried. There's something about the Japanese garlic, particularly from Aomori, that is very balanced, that you could eat it raw like this, that's lightly grilled and not have a massive garlic aftertaste. Again, this is the Tako Niniku, Tako Garlic from um, just south of Tawara City in Aomori Prefecture. It's been uh, grilled in, uh, uh, I guess it's like, a, like an oil, maybe an olive oil or something. Very subtle. Such a perfect accompany accompaniment with Wagyu or any kind of a steak, you have to have some garlic on the side. So good. All right, let's get into some more grilling here. This time, I want to introduce you to... Hey, Bob Joe! All the garlic. I want to introduce you to this Wagyu here. This is a different brand in Aomori. Um, this is, again, the Oma Machi no Kuroge Wagyu. Oma is very famous for Magoro, which is tuna. They fish it off of the Tsugaru Straits up there between Hokkaido. So a lot of you might have heard of Oma Magoro, Oma Tuna, Hon Magoro. But it's also famous for Wagyu too. They got some really delicious foods. In fact, you know what? I have a hard time thinking of what is, is not good in Aomori, except maybe some uh, Hoya or something, which is like sea squirt, which kind of tastes like a not one of my favorite foods in the world. But this is certainly going to be a treat. Now, it's, it's, in a, it's in a sauce already, so I don't think you have to add anything to it. Let's put this on the grill here. I can already hear it starting to sizzle. Oh. It's got kind of a sweet smell to it because of the tare that it's on, and there's a little bit of sesame on, this, on the tip here. Oh, man. Again, like, I don't... I, I can talk to you by leaning down to the meat. I don't like my yaki, I don't like my wagyu rare. I like it medium. The reason why is because when steak or wagyu is cooked through a little bit more, I think that the fats melt a little bit more too and there's more flavor as a result of it. But I can't tell the difference between a rare and a medium wagyu. I just like it, I like it when it's cooked through a little bit, but I don't want it on the outside overly cooked. So, the thing with yaki niku is that the grills are really hot and it cooks super fast, so it's hard not to have it a little pink, but there you go. That's about that's about where I like it. Um, but it cooks extremely fast, so it's, it's hard to get it cooked, and it's very thinly sliced too. But when it comes to steak, I don't like it rare. I prefer it like a, maybe a medium or a medium rare. Again, red beef, I think, is better rare because then it's more tender. But this is already tender because of all the fats. That's my personal preference. That's my personal preference. I'm just going to eat it off of this. I don't... There you go. Let's try this here. This has already some sauce on there. It's like my personal grill here. Oh, man. If you put Oma Gyu, Oma, Oma Machi no wa, Kuroge Wagyu, this brand of Wagyu, next to Oma Magro, I don't think I would be able to pick one that I liked more. I love Magro and Tuna, but I also love Wagyu too. I don't know if I could pick. Very juicy. The fats melt just like the other brand. I can't taste, because of the tare in there, any kind of a difference, a micro difference with the akami, the red part of the beef. But a lot of the Wagyu cattle are raised or born in different areas of Japan, and then they are brought over to Aomori for the maybe the last six months of their lives or, or something like this. And they, um, that doesn't really add a lot of difference between the taste. However, the winters in Aomori are extremely cold and that might play an impact, uh, a part in, in 
in the, in the flavor of the beef, but I haven't had in Japan any beef brand that was bad. Not at all. I just think whenever you go to an area in Japan, it is really good to try the local beef, to try the local sake, the local vegetables. And that is a reason to travel around the country from one town to another, from one prefecture to another. I'm having just one more piece of wine here. <laughs> this is the last one here. Oh my gosh, look at it. One more second and flip. Oh yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it here to the side. I don't want it. It fell in there, it's okay. I just wanna do one more time with the wasabi to show you. This is real wasabi too, cause it has a very green, fresh flavor. There's a big difference between the wasabi that comes in a tube and freshly prepared wasabi. So I'm gonna put that on the top here. And then the iPhone overheated because it was next to the grill. I put the iPhone next to the grill and the iPhone overheated so that I took it so I took the iPhone and I put it, I put it in the snow outside the outside of the restaurant. That's awesome. It was, it was too hot. Can you hide the Daijou that time? Yes, good. Hide Daijou. It's like what? It's too hot. How did that happen? I was like, wait. It's a phone overheating. That's never happened in the winter. And so I ran outside. I remembered almond has got all this snow and it's like minus one degree outside. It is not minus here. Hold on a second. I'm going to flip you. All right, we're back. Oh, that was crazy. I had the phone literally next to the, I had the phone literally next to the grill and it's so freaking hot there that it overheated. Like, I don't know what, I, there's not a lot that, a lot more that I can, I can tell you about this. Um, I really do feel that, uh, as, as somebody who travels a lot, that when I travel from one prefecture to the next, I love to try the local cuisine. A lot of that has to do with the, the vegetables, um, and it also has to do with the beef. And the beef in Japan, no matter where you go, it's really fantastic. The Wagyu in Japan, I don't think, I think once you start to eat it, you can understand why this is such a special thing. Um, it's a special taste. And the traveling to Aomori, if you go to any of the ryokan or traditional Japanese inns, you're going to get the local sake, one, one of my tenshus, one of my favorite brands of all time around Japan. And you're going to get a denshu, and you're going to get the local wagyu too. And um, um, it's, it's, it's hard to differentiate the tastes but it's worth traveling around the country for it. And I don't want to eat a different branded Wagyu from a different area of Japan if I'm in Aomori. I want to eat Aomori Wagyu. So I'm really happy that this place had the local Wagyu. It's just weird because I never tried the Oma Machi Kuroge Wagyu brand because it's so famous for, uh, it's so famous for tuna that it was, it was really shocking to me that they had, what, they have Oma branded Wagyu? I didn't even, I went to Oma many times and I didn't even know they had Wagyu brands there. So it's worth traveling around the country for that. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave the comments below. I'm really happy um, to answer them. Before I go, I have this last piece of Wagyu to eat, a little dish here. It's got the wasabi on there. Let's give this a try, just to say goodbye. I don't like to eat too much Wagyu. 
I'd say 100 grams, 150 grams, more than enough. It's not about volume. It's about cutting in little pieces and each bite you savor it. You want it to sit there on the tongue and just savor it. That's good Wagyu. This is incredibly good Wagyu. So yeah, give, give this place a check, uh, a look if, you, if you're in the Aomori area and um, always try the local Wagyu beef. Now, I'm gonna be in a live stream in about three hours again to take you into a Oden uh, place. Uh, there's an izakaya that serves Aomori Oden, which is a local type of Oden. Oden being like a, a simmered Japanese goodies inside of a, a, a really like, like a, uh, what is it, like a salty dashi sauce, it's uh, soup, it's so good. We're gonna try the Aomori brand of it, which is something I've never tried before, made with a really unique miso um, that I'm dying to learn about. That's served at a restaurant that's not too far away from here. I'll be back in about uh, uh, 5 p.m. Goji gorai is ne? About 5 p.m. To, to live stream that and show you that just before the dinner time. So I'm gonna process this Wagyu, be back with you really soon. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, again, leave me a comment below, and I will see you in a couple of hours. Take the last 20 seconds staring at a piece of meat grilling and sizzling because that's why I'm here, to eat meat. God, this is the greatest live stream ever for me. <laughs> I don't know if you, I don't know how, how good you guys like it because you're on the other side of this. This one doesn't sizzle as much. I thought there'd be more sizzling. Please, iPhone, don't overheat. If the, if the iPhone overheats, I'm going to have to put it in my mouth. I think some of the grease from the Wagyu might have popped up onto it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs>